Hi, my name is Etienne Racine. I'm a TME for Mentor Graphics, and in this presentation, you will see how you can use iJTAG to edit and insert DFT for mixing all devices. One of the tasks that DFT engineers often need to do is add control and observation points to different IPs, for example, mixing null devices. With test and iJTAG, you can do this automatically. You can also make IPs and your design IEEE 1687 compliant, that's iJTAG. You can create and validate the instrument connectivity language or ICL or ICL and the procedural description language or PDL files. You can run tests to validate your IPs, which means you can actually generate test benches and test patterns on the tester. You can also create test setup procedures with it to properly set your design in ATPG or scan test mode. Basically, Test and iJTAG provides automation that helps you save time and effort on these DFT related tasks, and that way you can focus on more important things. One of the main features of Tesset iJTAG is that you can use it to insert an iJTAG network around your IP blocks. For instance, you can add scan muxes, test data registers, and so on. All scripting is tickle based. You can typically invoke in house tickle procedures straight from the tool. For example, if we take the PLL illustrated here, it's normally driven through parallel inputs. A DFT engineer could therefore add the TDR, allowing you to shift in new values and then update them into the device. This implies creating clock, scan in, scan out, and also the capture, shift, and update ports. Once the TDR is created, mapping its actual bit values to the PLL inputs can be documented or not. So what are the exact benefits that Tessent iJTAG brings in this case? Firstly, it's able to extract the connectivity down to IP instantiated inside the design. It starts from your IP block and it extracts the connectivity by tracing up. Another benefit is that you can take the lower level tests that were defined for that IP specifically and they can be retargeted. Those tests are completely regenerated, taking into account that there is an access network between the IP and the top level. IPs that are iJTAG compatible are no longer constrained to use specific test interfaces. The test pattern generation is also interface agnostic. The tool basically figures how to get through the iJTAG network. You can generate very long test benches for simulation, or you can generate style, wiggle, and SVF pattern formats for a silicon test. Overall, this reduces the support and documentation burden that you need to come up with. It puts the focus on the IP functionality itself, not on the test access method that has been chosen to access this IP. Also, the IP level iJTAG files are self-documenting. The equal and PDL files say it all. Tessent iJTAG supports DFT insertion using a DFT specification file. Essentially, your design is read, either as RTL or gates, and any iJTAG file is also read by the tools. Connectivity is then traced. Any IP block or equal module that is already tied down in design is detected, and then additional design rule checks are performed to ensure that your design is iJTAG compliant. Based on the analysis, the tool will then generate a DFT specification file. It also supports scan and BIST from other test and products. If you are already a test compress user, or if you are using boundary scan or memory BIST from Mentor Graphics, you can still use the very same file. Users can introspect the design and make further edits. Once the DFT specification file is completed, it is then validated by the tools and processed. At this point, DFT logic gets generated and is inserted in your design. Similarly, there's the pattern specification file. With the pattern specification file, you can specify which test you want to do and you can launch an embedded simulation. A simulator such as ModelSim or QuestaSim is called under the hood and simulation results are displayed in a compact form. Simulation scripts and the entire log file remains available in case you need to refer to it. It also leverages clock monitors. 
contestant IJ tag actually knows what frequency to expect from your PLLs, for instance. This allows you to confirm that all simulated frequencies out of your PLL, for example, are as expected. This essentially performs an automated clock validation. Make sure to watch my other YouTube video where I take a PLL and I implement IJ tag around it. I create the IJ tag files, including the ECHO and PDL, and then functional tests are run to make sure that the PLL works as expected. Next, I take the PLL and I wrap it up, including a new TDR, which means I have to insert the TDR within my IP block, and I also need to make sure that this remains IJ tag compliant. I then extract the new echo file for that newly wrapped IP block, and I rerun my previous tests just to confirm that insertion went OK. Finally, I create a chip level top and I insert my IP block in it. Here again, I create the IJ tag network components, that means the test access port and any additional SIBs that might be required. I re extract again the echo, and I finally rerun my previous tests. This PLL-based example is a very good way to demonstrate all three key features of Tessent IJ tag, the IJ tag network insertion, equal extraction, and PDL retargeting. Thanks for watching this video. Once again, this is Etienne Racine from Mentor Graphics.